All right, boys, today's video, we're going to be doing kind of a part two to the video I did the other day, end up losing the game. Uh, but we just talked about what we were trying to do in terms of just teaching and training ourselves, um, especially specifically on the offensive side of the ball. This will this will also, um, the same kind of concept can certainly apply to defense. But basically what I would do, and we talked about it, is essentially you go into a head-to-head -head game or really any game that you just don't care about, and you're going to run the same play every single time and try to figure out what they can do to stop you. Now, what's really important is that when they stop you, you press pause and you actually look at like, okay, what did they do? Um, and, and again, that's kind of like a figure of speech, press pause, but like it, 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 it you do that either by clipping the, the play and studying it at the moment, or you study it later. Like you just need, you just need to wrestle with, okay, what, what happened, right? What happened? That is, that is super, super important. Now in this video, I'm going to show you what to do when you have uh, two plays. Uh, so when you have a power play and a counter play, okay, and the, and, and that's what we're gonna we're gonna discuss in this video. Now you can. Um, what's really interesting here is okay. I want to I'm gonna set this up by talking a little bit about uh, the 49ers, the difference or the 49ers when Chip Kelly was their coach, and the 49ers with Kyle Shanahan. Okay, with Kyle Shanahan, um, the main play, the power play, the play they're committed to running. In any Shanahan offense, the, the the play you will run and you must run and you better get good at. That play is the wide zone, the wide zone, which is an outside run. Generally, it can be cut back inside, of course, but but generally it's, it's a wide zone. It's called wide zone for a reason. It's going to run to the outside um, of the of the defense generally. You're running wide, okay? When Chip Kelly was the head coach, their their base their power play was inside zone, okay, or an inside base run play. Uh, that's really important because what it tells us is it doesn't really actually matter what your power play is. Your power play could be wide zone, it could be inside zone, it could be play action, right? It it, it does not matter what your power play is. What matters is what your power play does, okay? It does not matter what your power play is. It matters what your power play does. So what do I mean by that? It matters what your power play does. So uh, in the case of, of the wide zone, it, it will open up certain holes in the defense, okay? If you run that play really, really good, there are certain holes that it will open. Now, those holes that it will open will, by very nature, be different than the holes that would be open in an inside zone based uh, run scheme. Okay, 100% would be different. Now here we're just gonna go down. It's just understanding, okay, the relationship between your two main plays. That is that is what I'm that is what I'm trying to get at. That's the important thing. So what covers one thing is probably not gonna cover the other thing. Okay, that's the point. So we're gonna show that in the video hopefully, and uh, we'll see this. So I'm going Durham is my power play for this because this is the play that I need more repetition with and I need to get better at, okay? So uh, what's my reads? I'm going left, uh, looking left here. That's open, we'll take that. And as you can see, I'm already better than I was the other day because when I pass led that the other day, I threw in, a, I, I would throw the ball uh, in front of him. And when you do that, he, uh, when you throw the ball in front of that wheel route, what happens is you get that overthrow. So I already am one step better than I was the other day. Now he's in dime. Um, I'm trying to think of what he could do from a blitz threat. I'm not, I don't know anything yet. So we'll kind of monitor that again. Same read progression. Look to the right. Now he goes, man, heavy pressure. Okay. He sacks us. You could just throw the ball away if you wanted to, but I'm like, okay, he hit me with that. So now through and we're looking left, not there. Look right. Drags open. Nice throw. Okay, so in Madden uh, 24, what is really cool, uh, in my opinion, about passing is if you get perfect accuracy, even if you're under pressure, you won't get a, penal uh, a throwing penalty, which is not the case for other games, okay? It's just or, or for other years of Madden. So if I get perfect accuracy, I'm always going to throw the ball accurately, okay? So here, again, go zone, no hard flat. Boom, boom. And as you can see, we're already a lot better than we were. Now, this guy is actually in a defense that would give this, uh, that's going to give Durham specifically a little bit of trouble, uh, which is why it's important to, uh, to is why this rep is important, okay? Uh, because 
he's in a defense that will naturally give this play a trouble. So we're still going to try to push for the execution. Pushing through the obstacles is part of becoming a better uh, executor of the discipline that you're trying to get better at. In this case, we're trying to get better at uh, executing the play Durham. Okay. So this is uh so we end up getting seven. Like I said, in the red zone, you can kind of do whatever you want. You just got to score in the red zone. Uh, obviously things are going to change because of the, of the, of the way the, the red zone is designed. What I might do in the future is come into a game with, with one uh, main play that I want to work and then one red zone play that I want to work on might do that too. So we get to stop our first drive. Um, he's running a bunch of tight end. We'll talk a little bit about defense. So defense, you can apply this. Um, you can kind of apply this. It really just comes down to the thing I was going to say about offense real quick. So you can have, you can have any power play you want. Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter. Now there are some, some, some principles for, a good power play. It needs to, it needs to beat the majority of defenses. It needs to like, there's certain things It needs to attack a lot of field. Like there's certain key, th key factors that will uh, make a power play more effective or less effective. But in general, if you're calling a, a, a good, efficient, effective route combo, pretty much anything you see an MCS player call. And I know that's an oversimplification, but it's kind of true. Um, that will work. That will work. That will work. Okay. So, Anything can be a power play, uh, and what's important is that another. That's a nice little lurk there. Um, what's important is understanding what is now open in relation to the power play, or what can stop me. Uh, the same thing will be true on defense. What is my coverage vulnerable to, and then how do I either a user that or put other zones or other things there to to help that in certain situations. Okay, so uh, just kind of the way he's playing, he's going to blitz me here, I'm pretty sure. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the tight end to the running back, but we're going to look at that flat first, of course. So look out here. Oh, he doesn't throw it, and he lurked it. I didn't know you could get out there. Okay, so again, this is how skills developed. <laughs> um, this, is how, this is how you get better. So I didn't just be like, oh, he lurked me, but now what am I going to do? I'm going to watch the tape, and you can. I think every console you can take these little clips. So I'm looking at this. Okay, now my eyes, I got to walk back through what just happened, right? I'm looking at the flat. I see it's open, but his user's running to it. So what do I need to do? His user's committing to that route. I need to come off of that route and look at look at, look at the middle of the field. You could throw the tight end. You could throw the, the, the running back. And if I waited a second longer, I could throw the slot receiver. The middle of the field is, is open, so I've got to take that. I've got to, I've got to make that adjustment. So, uh, again, this is, this is how you refine and develop skill, guys. It really is. Uh, it's so important that, that you do this if you really want to learn how to get better at this game. It, 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 I just feel like there's just no better way to do this than intentional practice. Perfect practice makes perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. You can practice badly and you can make being bad a habit. And I have done that for a long time where I'll just go in a game. Oh, I'll just throw some stuff out there, you know, whatever. Um, no, you want to have intentionality, be systematic about it. So, all right, we're looking out to the right side. So I kind of noticed like this is probably a, a giveaway that's going to be man. So again, we just look out here, out there. I guess he's open the tight end. Boom. And so you're starting to see how we're putting this even, um, this will even affect, like if you do this right, this will even affect how you put a read progression together. If you really do this right and you truly like go through the level of detail that I'm trying to get you guys to see that is very helpful, this will even affect your read progression because you'll start to notice, okay, the running back route, it's not open quick enough for me to make that an instant read. I need to go from, what I really need to do is go from circle to tight end to fade. So we're going to go boom, no, tight end, yes, throw it. Boom. Okay? So it's 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 quick. Okay? All right. Um we'll just keep doing this. He's going to keep blitzing me, which is good because it just helps me understand the timing of things. But you have to force yourself to be disciplined. Don't be scared of the pressure. Um well, I'll talk about that in a minute. 
Boom. No, no. Step up. Boom. And I had the running back, but that wasn't my progression. I saw the space was open. I'm taking the space. Again, that is a reliable system that I can repeat and repeat and repeat. Okay? Really important. Okay, so I wanted to talk about the pressure because he's blitzing me a lot. Um, most people are just going to send four at a dollar or they're going to send five at a dollar, and you can, you can pretty much block that up. He's saying, I'm going to send six, and you, you're not going to be able to block it. So what you got to do, and you see there, and that's just a terrible freaking pass. I'm so mad about that pass. Okay, so how is skill developed? Again, Really important. I know I sound like a broken record, but I'm, you've got to force yourself to do this. So I kind of know what happened, but I got to look at the film. I got to go, what did I see? I looked right. I looked left. I saw the tight end was, or the, the fade was one-on-one, -on -one, and I saw him get that separation. So what do I have to do? I just have to pass lead it to the left. It's a touchdown. But instead, what I did was I tried to high point it, and it didn't work out. Okay? I don't know if I can get this set up. We'll take a delay. We'll take a delay. I don't want to waste my timeouts. I could have taken the time out, but I don't want to waste my time out. But, but again, you got to force yourself to look at, you got to watch yourself back. You got to, if you, if you watch yourself back, it will instantly make you better. It really will. It really will. It's made me significantly better at this game. Okay. All right. We're looking. Uh, so I got some time here. So we're looking to the right side of the screen. Then we're coming back to the tight end, the high, low between the tight end and the, and the post. So we're looking right quick. No, look left quick. He gets off of him again. So what am I going to do? This time I don't throw the ball wrong and I score a touchdown. That is so freaking important what just happened. I have executed a play poorly, then I executed it properly, and now the muscle memory is starting to form in my brain. That is, that is so freaking significant, guys. If you have not read the book, The Talent Code, if I could recommend any book to anyone that wants to get better at Madden that's not one of my eBooks. And I'm trying to figure out how to incorporate some of the principles of the talent code into my ebooks and how I teach the game. Read the talent code. Even if you just read the first like chapter or two, it will change how you see skill acquisition and development. And that's what Madden at its at its core is. It's game. It's game. How do you get better at chess? How do you get better at Madden? The same way. How do you get better at playing guitar? How do you get better at playing guitar or playing basketball? The same way. Uh, obviously, you're going to practice different things, but it's the same process. It's the same system, right? That's super important, guys. Super important. Okay, so defensively, uh, since we're in, a, in like kind of control of the game, I want to talk about this theory. I've been not theory, but just practice uh, concept. I've been I've been wanting to apply to defense. So. One of the things that I feel like I do, um, especially if I play someone that's like really good, um, I have a tendency to try to over adjust and become what I would, I don't know that undisciplined is the best word for this. I just think over adjusting is you try to over, uh, correct. Okay. The reason this defense right here is so good is because it takes away the most amount of field possible. What is the goal of defense? To try to constrain space. We can do that through a couple of methods. One of the methods we can do that is through uh, putting zones on the field, right? Putting our players on the field and coverage, coverage players. Another way we can do that is through speeding up the time so that the quarterback uh, does not have time to just sit back there all day and let those routes get downfield. So we can increase the time in which uh, we can speed up the 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 play so that the routes can't develop downfield we do that through blitzing okay and then another way that we can constrain the the space on the field is through where our players are where our players are the, those are kind of the main uh principles for uh, space constraint so where are user at where do i where do i run right at the snap of the ball so like in this situation where should i run at the snap of the ball i should run to the left side so i run left nothing there boom take that I'm okay with that because I got a mid zone. I got a lot of help over there. Knowing where your help is is another super important factor uh, when we're trying to teach ourselves how to use her on defense. You've got to know where your help is. So like right here, I know to the wide side of the field, you know, now here he goes a trio. I'm not sure what to expect. I'm going to sit like this. Just try to take this way. This way you should never call single back trio. <laughs> so what was I, what was I anticipating? 
a big part of defense, truly, it, it really is anticipating, 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 anticipating. You're trying, and, and, and offense to a degree, if you think about it, a pre-snap read progression is anticipating. I'm anticipating certain routes being open at certain points. Defense, I'm anticipating him trying to do certain things, uh, trying to attack certain spaces on the field. Because base, and, and, and really in large part, based off of the defense that I'm putting on the field. So like in this example, where is he going to be able to attack? Well, he's got the flat to the right, but I'm not too carry, don't care too much about that. So I'm looking for a tight end crosser or that right there. As you see that if, if I don't go that way, if I don't, if I stay with that tight end vertical, he completes that hundred percent, hundred percent of the time. But because I understand if the tight end goes to the right, my, my, my user responsibility, my rules that I give myself pre-snap, if he goes that way, I know that I've got to get back. I've got to get back to the middle of the field, okay? So like right here, where do I want to run the snap of the ball? I want to take away the snap throw seam streak. So literally at the snap of the ball, I am running to the left side of the screen. You'll see here and just watch my user. This is super, super good stuff. I, I hope I hope you guys like this stuff because this is, you got me talking about some stuff I'm really passionate about. Um, and, and really, I just need to be better about. So I'm going left here, take that away. Now there's nothing going to the corner, so I know I don't have to go cover that. And I f see how, see what I'm saying? When you constrain space properly, you force very specific throws. So it's kind of the same concept applied to defense as far as like a power and counterplay. And up to this point, I haven't even had to call my counterplay, right? But that's that's super, super important, okay? All right, so we get another stop. I feel like defense played pretty good, and I haven't really had to do anything, and, and that's, that's always good if you don't have to do anything. Okay, so what's my reads? I'm looking to the right side of the field. If that guy runs to the right side of the field... I got to work back to my tight end. Okay, so here we go. Boom, tight end, boom. And he was screaming at me. He sent six. He That is such a good rep right there. Um, man, this is the kind of stuff that I feel like you, people should get more excited about. Seriously. Um, this is doing the right thing at the right time in the right way. So look, look at this real quick. We're going to clip it. We're going to register we did something good in our brain. So I said pre-snap. I'm looking to the right side. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look to the right side and watch watch the circuits in my brain fire. Even if I get a delay a game, it's not going to matter. So I just, want, I just want you to see this. Okay. Automatically, right here, I could probably throw this, but I know he's manned up, so I'm not going to risk it. I'm off, of, I'm off of circle instantly. Now, because I've thrown so many interceptions, um, I'm not messing with this running back. I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to look to the tight end. I even said that pre-snap. So I see, and he's screaming at me, right? He's screaming at me, but I see the tight end. This right here tells me, because this guy's cross man, it tells me the tight end's open. So I'm instantly throwing the tight end, instantly throwing the tight end. Look at this. This is great. Um, it's, it, it's a great execution of the rep. Now, could he use for that? I actually think it's kind of hard to go right and then left with your user this year. So it makes that route combo a lot better. So... Anyway, that's super, super important. Okay, so he backs off the left side, but then look, he represses here to the right. So a little pre-snap read. It tells me that circle's probably not going to be open, but I'm going to still look at it. Nope, not open. Back to the tight end. Boom, I'm there. And again, that's more of a release thing. If I had, uh, if I had, um, what's his name? If I had uh, William Perry, the fridge, because he has traditional four, he probably gets that route off. Probably gets that route off, okay? All right, so same thing. I'm going to look to the right side, not there. Look to the tight end. Now look what he did. Look what he did. He put a purple there, which, okay, that does two things. So I got bad accuracy. We'll cover that. But I want to cover this real quick because this is so freaking important. Okay, so I'm looking. So I'm running my power play right. I'm looking right now. That's dead. I can't throw that. Now I'm looking to the tight end, and I look. Okay, he's open. Now I could throw it right now, but I, I look to the left, and I see, okay, there's a zone there. So – it does two things. Number one, it limits the ability. It takes away the ability that I have uh, to be able to throw the tight end. Okay, that's one. But the thing that it also does, and this is the unintended consequence for him, is he now has to, uh, the pressure is not going to be as fast. So what I need to do is be calmer in the pocket, and I need to continue the rep, continue the rep. Okay. Boom, no, no, yes. Okay, so I looked to the left. I saw that DB was blitzing. So guess what? Tight ends open. Boom. So you're seeing literally in real time muscle memory being developed. Muscle memory is literally, it's not a thing really. 
um, it's it, what muscle memory is, is your brain firing these circuitries at the right time. Okay. All right. Same thing. Boom. No tied in. Yes. Boom. And also notice you're seeing, hopefully as I'm, as I'm throwing this, I'm starting to get better, um, in, in really not even trying to, but I'm just starting to really get better at blue passing too, as you're seeing this. Okay. So these are just very, very valuable reps. Uh, because this is against a defense that's going to send a lot of pressure. And the mistake a lot of people make that I want to talk about with, with pressure, that was actually a really good cross, man. I got to hold on to that because he actually played that great. The uh, mistake people make with pressure that I wanted to just quickly touch on, if you get sacked, what's practically going to happen? Does it hurt you? No, it does not hurt you, okay? And so, so I think Madden players uh, really just inherently – and there I had the running back. We'll take time out right there. Now, situationally, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to my counterplay, and I'm going to explain why. So I'm going to go to my counterplay here situationally. It's primarily due to the fact, um, and of course I can't. That sucks. Uh, okay, we'll just call this. If we get sacked, we get sacked. Okay, and I need to come back to the pressure thing. I'll talk about it in a second. Look right, no, no, yes, throw it. Now I'm upfield, get out of bounds. It's the right read, okay? It's on him to adjust. And unfortunately, he's going to quit out of this game. I really want to keep talking about this. We didn't show a power counterplay, but I'll do another video on this. Actually, you know what? We'll get into another game. All right, perfect. I'm on offense first. Okay, so we got another game. I don't know how uh, – this guy's decent. He's got a good team. I think he's got a playoff team team. And I think I've played this guy before, so we'll see how it goes. But – but again, just understand like the muscle memory that's being developed as you go through this process. It is a painful process. It is. But if you engage, if you engage in it, it, it makes you so much better at this game. Um, it's not because I'm doing anything that's like, oh my gosh, wow, right? It's I am doing the right thing at the right time because I've repeatedly done the wrong thing. And I've and, and instead of just letting that be. I forced myself to go, no, I've got to think about why I did the wrong thing. And then I've got to work. And the work is the reps. I've got to work to do the right thing. Okay, this guy's doing a little different defense, so it should be a little simpler. Um, it's not going to be as much blitz-heavy stuff. I, don't, I would hope not, but we'll see. So, okay. So what am I looking at? Looking at the wheel route. Okay, so here we go. Look at the wheel route. Not there. He's in man. So where, do I, where am I looking next? Boom. Tied in. Now, I can – I actually am starting to think – as I'm saying this, uh, and as I'm as I'm talking about this this concept and stuff, um, all right, sorry about that. Uh, I, I'm thinking like if it's me, I really need to go from wheel route to tie it into fade uh, for the quick read. So look right, no wheel, yes, boom, I have that, and that's fine. Like it's just a matter of like, okay, it, you just didn't get rid of it quick enough, you know. And I, I threw it quick. Um, I just did, you know, the release and all those are, are factors. They really are. And if you really want to uh, block a blitz, then you got to block a running back. And this is this specific play is a five out play. Now, how do you make it? How do you make it not a five out play? Well, you basically block your running back, it, it, and it is in is what you would probably do in my opinion. All right, here we go. Okay, throw that, pass lead down outside. See how he doesn't animate? Okay, it's a good rep. That was a curl flat. It wasn't a hard flat. So as I looked at that defender, he kind of hesitated to get outside. That tells me, boom, throw it. So again, this is how you do it. This is how you, this is how you develop muscle memory, what we think of as muscle memory. When it's really not, it's, it's myelin is what it is. Uh, but anyway, let's take a look here. Okay. Now, pre-snap tells me I could peek the, the guy on the right, but, um, ah, crap. Pre-snap, it tells me I could, I could look at the guy on the right and try to hit that. It could, I could do that, right? But, okay, got it. I need you to accept the penalty. Uh, but, but what I want to do is I want to look. I, want, I, I can't. It's not a reliable thing I can do every single time. Every single time I can look to that flat, and then I can look to that tight end. And when I'm looking at that flat, it gives me a picture of other things as well. So you see there's a tight end up there, but look, he's open now. Running back, boom. And that's the route that I always throw picks on. But I've changed in my progression when I'm looking to that. I'm not looking at that early. 
I'm not. I'm not because I've thrown way too many interceptions and I've seen that it's just really hard to make that read for me. So I need to change my progression a little bit and go wheel route to the middle of the field to the left. So I'm going right, no, left, yes, boom. It's out. And, and honestly, that was the right read. It really was. I might have thrown it just a hair too late or got it there just a hair too late, but it was the right read. He was in a purple. Purple shouldn't play that. So, I mean, they, these are the these are the big, like, I don't know, just learning, learning of, of how to execute. So, all right. Running back, boom. And now we're in the red zone, so we run RPOs. <laughs> this guy probably won't be able to guard this. Yep. And we get a fumble, so he gets the ball back. <sighs> sometimes you just can't, you just can't, you know, sometimes you just, sometimes you just can't get it done. It's funny because as I'm trying, the game is like making it harder on me to, to do this. I feel like this is pretty, the, the thing about this kind of practice, guys, it's intentionally very intense. It's intentionally intense. So what that means for us is you can't do it. Um, you, you can't do this for 10 hours a day. You can't, you, this is like, you need to do this for one or two games, my opinion. Um, and then you need to go do something different. Honestly, that was a weird setup, a double post That was a weird setup, a double post. So, you know, this is the idea of acquiring skill and then refining skill is, okay, we can now go put everything together and actually run a game or, you know, maybe we'll run the ball a little bit more. Uh, but, but, but here's the thing. This is the question I have that I actually think is a really interesting question. Do you think that if you just play head to head, like if you just, if you're just playing, but you're not like actually, you're not processing, you're not doing some of the things I'm talking about in these, in this video, do you think you're getting better or not? Because what you're doing is it's really more passive. And in my opinion, what I'm starting to think, uh, just based off myself and kind of watching like how I could play Madden every single day, but basically what, ha what ends up inevitably happening, in my opinion, is you're not actually playing the game. You're on passive mode. And so whatever you've trained, whatever, whatever the habit is that you've trained, you're now doing on autopilot. You're now doing it on autopilot. Um, in my opinion. So I, I just think like for me, that's kind of a, a big deal. I just want to blitz him. So the way he's playing offense, he's, he's running like really long developing route combinations. So that's where like when you're playing somebody like this, if you blitz them, you're going to have a better chance of getting a stop. So again, back to the discussion about active learning versus passive learning. So uh, in the best example I can give, this is just like for me, I'm starting to wrestle with this too, but Again, we're talking about just really intensive practice. Really intensive practice, I can't handle for a very long time. I can probably only handle maybe an hour of it right now. Like at, at the longest amount of time, I can only handle about an hour of it. Um, and then I need to go like, I need to, they, they literally talk, call it uh, taking a brain break. You, you've got to like, you've got to, you got to calm down for a minute, you know, because you're so intentionally focused. So my point in saying that is, it kind of raises this whole idea of like active learning versus pass versus um, versus passive learning. So here, R one that wasn't bad. Active learning versus uh, we'll actually look at the clip because we did get an incompletion. So just kind of like think through, just 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 kind of see. So again, flat no tight end drag his users there. He's got a guy in the yellow for the running back. So now like literally within an instant second, I'm like okay, I got to go through. I got to throw the, uh, and he's got a hard flat there. So I got to throw the R1. So yeah, that was all I had. Uh, I got to stop. Um, I, I wish the, I wish the play clock like, or the, the little thing didn't you know, automatically just shame. I wish, I don't know. I wish it was 40 seconds and I wish, uh, I wish it didn't uh, excel unless you turned on like shoe clock. Cause you'll see here, like it's 27 seconds, but then watch, you'll get a little rundown. And it will run down. I don't know why they do that, but it'll run down to this guy's taking forever to pick his play. But it'll run down. Oh, I guess it didn't there. I don't know why. We actually have some time. 
But my uh, so back to the uh, we need to we need to look at this play. So no, no, yes, boom. So right there, he had the tight end early, but he didn't have a flat. So as I was looking, boom, boom, right, left, middle, right, left, middle, right, and we'll show that again here. So what I'm doing, post snap, I'm looking left, middle, right, my eyes. Look left. I actually have it. I threw it way late, and I still caught it because he was in a curl flat. I threw that way late, but I register mentally, okay, I can actually throw that late as long as I pass lead it the right way. This is what set feet lead allows you to do because you have that throwing velocity, so it gets there quicker. Mm, I kind of had that. I missed a couple reads here, uh, and I got a penalty. That was honestly just a bad rep. And, and, and again, if we wanted to go through the whole practice of learning to play, what would we do? We would go back. We'd look at the film. But again, notice like he's kind of figured out some adjustments that he likes against this, and he is starting to adjust to it. He's manning somebody up. He's, he's dropping his own here or there. So uh, it's gonna, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. i got to execute this rep first. No hard flat. I throw that every time. I throw that every time. So what does the hard flat uh, do? The hard flat stops the wheel. But if you think about your counter play, what does the short corner do a really good job of beating? A hard flatted cover three. So hard flat in a cover three shell is one of the best ways to adjust to the verticals wheel or the Durham wheel route of this play, which then allows me to come back and say, okay, then when I go to then when I go to double corner, it's different. What what's open changes um, based off that. So it attacks different spots on the field. Okay. Okay, so we're looking left space, middle space, right space. Here we go. Hard flat, middle space, open. And that was honestly a little scary, but, I mean, it was open. And, again, you have to train yourself to do this. This does not happen without deliberate practice. That was actually – I feel pretty good about that read, honestly. That was a pretty um, – I just, I just didn't throw it right. But uh, I feel pretty good about that read. He was really kind of take that tight end underneath. And that's another little – I probably – the running back probably was more open. Um, but anyway, let's uh, – no. Running back. See the man up? So I'm going to throw that inside. I have it, but I got hit. But now I'm registering. Okay, so he's what, – what's he doing? He's cross mini. So this would be an example. We'll go ahead and finally call the counter play because we're 32 minutes in and I haven't called it yet. We'll call the counter play so you can see this. But basically, he's in a defense. He's got adjustments he likes to stop Durham, right? So he may man up the running back or whatever, okay? This is the counter play. It picks up pressure. Um, it's not great against man, but Durham is good against man. And what am I, what's my read progression here? Well, I'm going to peek the tight end, peek the drag, and then look to the corner. No, no, corner route left, wide open. Boom. See how that worked? So now... That just puts a little thought in his head of he's got the double corner play or he's willing to run that play. So from a defensive perspective, you can't defend your power play and your counter play with the same defense. If you could, it wouldn't be a good play. It would not be a good play. Now, because we're in the red zone, we're going to hit him with an RPO. Hopefully we'll actually get in the end zone here. Got a little bit of a, got a Vikings fan playing in the Packers stadium. That's a little different. All right, let's go RPO here. Okay, so, and, and I didn't talk too much of it. I've never taught how to read the RPO. It's not really a big deal. We'll go ahead and just kick our field goal and try to uh, try to get the ball back offensively. But um, when you run an RPO, especially like the one out of Bunch Strong, what I'm doing is really the same thing that I'm doing um, when I'm when I'm running Durham. I'm looking to the right side. I'm looking at the space on the right side of the field. If it if there's no defender in that area after the ball is snapped, I'll throw it. If there is a defender in the area, but he's like backed off, I feel like I could juke him out, I'll throw it. And then I know that the default option of that specific RPO is to give the ball to the running back. So I don't have to make a decision to give the running back. Me just not throwing the RPO will give the ball to the running back. So that's a that's another little like uh, another play uh, it, you don't have to take as much time to master it as you do Durham. 
because you don't have to make so many decisions. You literally have to make one decision. Am I throwing the flat or am I giving the ball? Okay. Dude, you are taking forever to pick your bunch offset and run double post. So if we take that principle that we just taught on offense and we apply this uh, to defense, what can we apply is, is kind of an important – oh, what a play by Bo. I don't know what I did adjustment-wise there. Uh, what can we apply, right? What, what can we apply? Well, what we can apply is if you look at this defense, and again, what I talked about, and I've talked about this a lot, but what is the fundamental purpose of defense? Well, we're trying to constrain the space that the offense has to get receivers open. So the criteria for a good defense at the core is, and there's, there's a couple ways in which we can constrain the space, okay? Number one, we can, uh, with, with, with coverage adjustments, okay, that's one. Uh, number two is with pressure, which you're going to see here. I'm going to blitz him. And this is gonna this is gonna limit what he can run. You see here, running back goes left. Throw that right into a KO. That should be a KO. Boom. Okay. So uh, one is coverage adjustments. Second is uh, pressure because you can speed up the time in which the opponent has to throw. Those are the two main ones that we can constrain space. And then one is like where the uh, what I would say is like where the ball is on the field. Ball placement. Where is the ball? What hash is the ball on? Uh, what formation do they have? It's like it's like really just more so like situational uh, adjust situational uh, decision making. Okay, so that that's part of it too. Let me see here. I know he wants to throw that C route. I'm just going to take that. He did have somebody open, but he didn't hit it, and we get the ball back. So I want to choose a defense that number one has um, what was I what did I say? Covered adjustments. I want, to, I want to pick a defense in which I can adjust out of, okay? I can create good coverage adjustments out of. Just like in, Matt, in, 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 the, offense, in the offensive avenue, I want to have an offense in which I can create good route combos out of. All right, back to this. We're looking left. No. Middle. No. Running back. I had it. I got sacked again. So what's that teaching me about my pocket presence? Number one, it's teaching me, okay, the ball's got to kind of be out. Um, it, it doesn't, you don't want to start tap dancing, but you want to time, you want to time stuff for sure. So as I'm looking at this again, I'm saying, okay, he's still kind of doing the same adjustments. And now I'm looking, I want to hit that right there. Now I got an under pressure out of reach, didn't blew it, whatever. I'm not good at throwing that route. Okay. I got to get better at it. Now we're in a situation where I probably shouldn't call the counter play here, but I feel like he's not going to be able to stop it. And I feel like he's really sitting on Durham. So we're going to go to the counter play. If he was a little better of a, uh, like just a little better of a situational Madden player, he probably would take corner strike away on that play because that's what I went to last time. So anyways, that's a little bit about how you use the power counter system in Madden. I want to thank you for watching the video. And if you want to learn my entire offensive system, defensive systems, they are available by joining the Patreon. The link's going to be in the description below.